wood chip bioreactors. There's still a little mystery in exactly how they work. Once one is installed, just like the water in the underground tile it treats, you hardly know it's there. That's the nature of a wood chip bioreactor, one of a number of options conservation-minded farmers are using to reduce the amount of nitrates in water leaving their farms. It's no secret that extensive tile drainage of low-lying soils has boosted corn and soybean production by leaps and bounds across the Midwestern United States. But an unfortunate byproduct of that productivity boom that's becoming more evident is high nitrate levels in the tile drainage water. Wood chip bioreactors are getting more attention because tile waters routed through them show cuts in annual loads of nitrates from 15% to 60% on average, and in some cases, even more. Wood chip bioreactors are placed near the outlet of a tile line on the edge of a field. First, a pit is dug to the depth of the tile. Sizes vary, but most are about 100 feet long and up to 30 feet wide. An inflow water control structure is connected to the tile line to route water into the bioreactor. A second water control structure is installed at the lower end of the pit. A perforated tile connected to the water control structure at the upper end of the pit will distribute water evenly across the bioreactor, and a second perforated tile at the lower end will gather treated water and direct it to an outflow water structure. The pit is then filled with wood chips. The chips are covered with a geotextile fabric to separate the wood chips from a topsoil cover, which is seeded to grass. Here's what happens underground that you don't see. When small gates are lowered into the water control structure at the upper end of the bioreactor, tile water is redirected through the perforated tile into the bioreactor. In times of high flow, some of the tile drainage water will bypass the bioreactor and flow to the original tile outlet. The water control structure at the lower end of the bioreactor controls how fast water moves through the wood chips. Gates are lowered to the structure during higher flow to raise the water level in the bioreactor and slow the water flow long enough for denitrification to take place. That happens when bacteria, fungi, and other microorganisms living in the soil colonize the wood chips, using the carbon in the chips as their food and convert nitrates in the water to harmless nitrogen gas. There's still a lot we don't know about bioreactors, like how long they will work and how to maximize their ability to remove nitrates. But their advantages are clear. They are small and can be easily installed. They're placed at edges of fields so they don't take any cropland out of production. They can be used at sites where targeted nitrate removal wetlands can't be installed. And they can be used with other nitrate removal technologies. Bioreactors are relatively inexpensive to install and may qualify for USDA conservation cost share assistance. They don't require much maintenance. You hardly know they are there. Put one in and it begins to remove nitrates immediately with the first water flow. Well, that's the short story on the bioreactor, the practice that's not seen or heard, but naturally does its job to improve water quality for us all.